everyone. This is Pastor Misty Howick. I'm an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church. And today we are finishing up our Proverbs. I'm a couple days behind. I, I said this last week, it's really hard for me to do one chapter a day, especially as we've been getting ready for all of our Holy Week services. So we had a really great Maundy Thursday service uh, last night. We're going to have a Good Friday service tonight at 7 o'clock. And then Easter, we'll have a sun, Easter sunrise and an Easter 1030 service on Sunday. So we're looking forward to all of that. And our church has put together some wonderful programs for everyone. So if you're not going anywhere and you'd like to celebrate either Good Friday or Holy, uh, or <laughs> Holy Easter, there you go. Um, come check us out. New Song UMC in Surprise, Arizona. We are finishing up Proverbs. We are supposed to be done by today. And so here we are. Um, chapter 30, I'll post chapter 31, which is the last chapter in Proverbs in just a little bit. So uh, you can be looking forward to seeing that again later today. So we're going to go ahead and read chapter 30, and I'm going to read it out of the New Revised Standard Version today instead of the Tanakh version out of the Jewish uh, Study Bible. And then we have lots of comments, lots of notes about this particular chapter because there is a, a character that's mentioned here that's very interesting. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at that in just a second. Um, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started on our reading. So it starts out with the sayings of Agur. And uh, the questions are, you know, was that a person? Was it a prophet? Was it another name for Solomon, King Solomon? Who knows? Well, we're going to have a little bit more information here in just a little bit. The words of Agur, son of Jake, an oracle. Thus says the man, I am weary, O God. I am weary, O God, and am wasting away. Surely I am too stupid to be human. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor ha have I knowledge of the holy ones. Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in the hollow of the hand? Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is the person's name, and what is the name of the person's child? Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Do not deny them to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty or riches. Feed me with the food that I need, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not slander a servant to a master, lest the servant curse you and you be held guilty. There are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers. There are those who are pure in their own eyes, yet are not cleansed of their filthiness. There are those, how lofty are their eyes, how high their eyelids lift. There are those whose teeth are swords, whose teeth are knives to devour the poor from off the earth, the needy from among mortals. The leech has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. Three things are never satisfied. Four never say enough. Shale, the barren womb, the earth ever thirsty for water, and the fire that never says enough. The eye that mocks a father and scorns to obey a mother will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by vultures. Three things are too wonderful for me, four I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a woman. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wrong. Under three things the earth trembles, under four it cannot bear up. A slave when he becomes king, and a fool when glutted with food. A contemptible woman when she gets a husband, and a maid when she supplants her mistress. Four things on earth are small, yet they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people without strength, yet they provide their food in their summer. The badgers are a people without power, yet they make their homes in the rocks. 
Lo locusts have no king, yet all of them march in rank. The lizard can be grasped in the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. Three things are stately in their stride, four are stately in their gait. The lion, which is mightiest among the wild animals and does not turn back before any, and the strutting rooster, the he-goat, and a king against whom none can stand. If you have been foolish, exalting yourself, or if you have been devising evil, put your hand on your mouth. For as pressing milk produces curds and pressing the nose produces blood, so pressing anger produces strife. Okay, so that's chapter 30 for you in Proverbs. Um, a little bit of history I'm going to pull from the Jewish um, study Bible here in the Tanakh version. Um, so this is collection six. Um, so Proverbs is split into six different collections, which means that they're, you know, kind of uh, different in some ways. Um, and it says between this and chapter 31 and the end, the book ends with a number of miscellaneous poems and epigrams. In style and sometimes in content, they are quite different from the earlier chapters and different from each other. Agar. This mysterious poem is ascribed to an otherwise unknown, apparently foreign sage. Its message is the overriding importance of piety, which it does not require wisdom to possess. The poem seems like a cautionary response to the rest of the book of Proverbs, which makes wisdom a value of the highest order. Such is the poem's difficulty that other commentators read it as an expression of skepticism or as a claim to a superhuman or mystical knowledge superior to human wisdom. All right, give me a second. <clears throat> the text and meaning of the title of this poem, after the word jacquet, are very uncertain. It is usually thought that Agar was a Masite, a member of the North Arabian tribe of Massa. 1 Kings 5.10 shows that the Israelites had respect for the wisdom of the sons of the East, of which this passage might preserve an example. So this might be an inscription to a foreign sage, or it might be fiction, um, intended to show that even a foreigner can see the plain truth that pious obedience to God's word supersedes all human wisdom. Um, it is called an oracle. Um, it's the same word, neum, that uh, Balaam introduces in his oracle in Numbers, tw chapter 24. Um, there's another idea that instead of it saying, like, these are the words of Agar, son of Jacke, man of Massa, to the man of Ithiel, um, to Ithiel and Ukal, instead, it, it's, there's one thought that says that this is actually a sentence that says, I am not God. And then it goes into uh, verse 2, I am brutish, less than a man. I lack common sense. So uh, very interesting, lots of different interpretations uh, of this. Uh, biblical scholars are not in agreement over uh, who, if this is agar, if this is a person, if it's a different, uh, um, su not subscription, attribution here, uh, or if it just says, I am not God, uh, which I really like that idea um, because it's very humbling and especially in this season of Lent, that's kind of where I am. And so you can look at that first part of chapter 30 and you can look at it like that. Um, something is very interesting in chapter 30 is that at the near the end, it's about verse 15, verse 15 through verse 33, so middle we actually have something happening here which are numerical sayings. Um, they are numerical sayings which associate things sharing a certain feature. And when two numbers are mentioned, which if you were with me when I read it, you might have seen that it would say like, there are three things like this and there's four like this. It actually means that second number. So if you were paying attention, you were like, oh, well, it's stating four things after that. And that's that's true, there are four of those things. Um, sometimes the numbered items are followed by a supernumerary item which represents the extreme or surprising case. Numerical sayings are common in the Bible. We see that in Amos, we see it in other Proverbs chapters, and other Canaanite literature. 
So we have these numbers, um, starting with verse 15. Three things are insatiable, four never say enough. Shale, a barren womb, earth that cannot get enough water, and fire, which never says enough. Um, and that is actually the translation out of the um, Hebrew Bible, this Jewish study Bible. Uh, ours did not come out so well said. It, the interpretation was not so good the first time I read it. Also in verse 15, it says, The leech has two daughters, give and give. In our NRSV translation, it says, The leech have, has daughters who say, give, give. So uh, there's still not a consensus on how to interpret this from the ancient Hebrew and the original texts. Uh, what does all of this have to say about how we should live? Um, you know, there's a lot of humility in this, um, a lot of attribution back to God, a lot of praising God. Um, you know, two things that I ask of you from verse 7, do not deny them to me before I die, keep lies and false words far from me. You know, we, we need to share these same morals. These are morals that we can keep even today. Um, give me neither poverty nor riches, but provide me with my daily bread. We see that connected back to the Lord's Prayer. So, God give me my daily bread, right? Um, but provide, uh, lest being sated, I renounce, saying, who is Lord? This is an idea of if, if we have more than we need or not enough, we'll question God's power in our life. So God, just give us just enough so that we might continue to rely on you. Um, let's see. Or being impoverished, I take the, to theft and profane the name of my God. Uh, so I think that there's a lot of humility that we can take from this particular chapter. Um, and then the rest is, to me, it feels very um, praiseworthy of God and what God has done. There's a lot of holding up creation in here, things that, uh, th three things, this is verse 18, three things that are beyond me, four I cannot fathom, how an eagle makes its way over the sky, how a snake makes, it, makes its way over a rock, how a ship makes its way through the high seas, and how a man is with a woman. Uh, those are things that, you know, they're kind of saying, wow, they're so, it's so amazing, like I don't fully understand them. Uh, Four are among the tiniest on earth, yet they are the wisest of the wise. Ants are a folk without power, yet they prepare food for themselves in summer. The badger is a folk without strength, yet it makes its home in the rock. The locusts have no king, yet they all march forth in formation. And you can catch the lizard in your hand, yet it is found in royal palaces. So all of these kind of have uh, connections back to creation and lifting up God and God's, you know, all all knowingness, or it's in God's how God created all these complicated systems and beings and creatures uh, that are hard to understand. Okay, that is it for chapter 30, um, and we will be doing chapter 31 in just a little bit, so uh, you'll probably see that pop up in the next hour. I wonder what you have to say about this chapter 30. I Obviously, I didn't hit every verse, but I kind of talked a little bit about the beginning and some of the themes that rose up. And this is one of those that I think is very beautiful, very beautiful poetry, and I like some of the morality that's lifted up there for, for how we should be even today. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.